Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how I go about simplifying from a photograph for a painting. Um, this lovely picture of this overgrown cottage was from Pixabay by Michael Vines. Um, my first step was to make a very loose, very simple rough sketch. I shall list um, all my materials in the description below. There are three full episodes of this painting and sketch on Patreon, so if you're interested, please follow the link and take a look. So I wet the paper all, all over except for the building. I've left that dry. And now this is a very weak mixture of uh, raw sienna on the Harky brush, the large Harky brush. And I am just trying to build up some sort of background um, of all that overgrown foliage. I want quite dense coverage uh, with some variation of colour from light to dark. Now I'm mixing up my green from Prussian blue, raw sienna and a bit of ultramarine blue. Not too dark to start with and because the paper is still wet um, it's diffusing nicely and loosely. I'm not worried about detail at this point. Just trying to get the, the green paint roughly where I've sketched in where the foliage um, overgrows at the side and the front of the cottage. Now I'm adding some Prussian blue and some uh, burnt sienna to get a nice dark green and I'm going to start building up the shadows in the, in the foliage and the trees um, and building up the foliage as a sort of framing device to frame the cottage. Um, I'd like to have some of the corners fairly dark. I think once the tape is peeled off at the end of the painting, I think that the contrast there will look quite nice. And I think um, some nice darker greens around the edges will really help to bring out the cottage a bit more. Just use a clean damp brush and tidy up across the roof there because I'll be painting that red in a bit. Now I've gone in for some even darker paint. This has got a lot more Prussian blue in it. It's quite a, a bluey green. And I'm now using the corner of the Harky brush to make some more definite um, loose foliage shapes, if you see what I mean. I'm sort of following the, the where I've sketched in the rough shapes of the trees that are overgrowing the cottage in particular. Um, so I'm going to get those in first so I know exactly where they are before I start painting the cottage. Just slowly building up the shapes, trying to keep um, the tones balanced. I'm not too worried about copying the photograph exactly as you can see. I just want a loose interpretation of it. That's one of the reasons I chose a black and white photograph is so that I could then choose my own colours and just focus on the tones. The three tones, um, the lightest lights which will be the white of the paper and some of the pale yellows, the mid-tones and the darkest darks which will go on last. I think this layer is now starting to look quite good just make a few adjustments here and there making sure that my paint brush is fairly dry and my paint is quite rich so that I don't get any runbacks. If I was to use watery paint now um, I'd get um, cauliflowers and runbacks which wouldn't look very nice. So this layer is now nearly finished, nearly ready to start painting the building. And then once the building's done, I can go in and finish off the trees with the tree trunks and some nice bright foliage and some shadows. I think that'll do now. If we zoom in, then we can see that 
the green paint in different shades is actually working quite nicely um, to show the trees coming across um, the front of the building which was what I wanted. Now the next stage once it was dry was I used a pencil and I drew in the wooden slats or planking across the building um, fairly darkly with a pencil and those lines will look quite nice once I put some light washes of paint over them and hopefully give me that effective look that I want. Simple but effective. I'm going to use light red for my roof. Um, I want it lighter towards the left and darker when it goes into the shadow of the undergrowth um, towards the right. There's a bit of Payne's grey mixed in there as well. I'm just going to uh, wet all of the surface, the wooden surface and, and planking of the building uh, with just with the paint water. There's, you can see a little bit of colour there but it doesn't matter. And I'm going to, once, once all the visible bits are wet, I am going to make up quite a thin, weak, in fact a very weak mixture of raw sienna. Um, I'm just going to touch that across the building um, just to put a very light layer of tone and colour across. I want a lot of the white paper still to shine through because most of the building is, is our lightest light in the reference photograph and I want to try and preserve that if I can. Now I'm going up um, a step up in tone from the raw sienna to burnt sienna and I'm going to use that to start off to put in some of the darker areas of the cottage, some of the more shadowy areas and also to get some texture as well as tone into the picture. Because the planks are horizontal, I'm using the brush in sort of horizontal strokes most of the time, um, which will help to give me um, the look of the texture of the surface, the wooden surface that I want. Just putting in um, some darker paint along where that um, where there's the roof of that sort of veranda or porch. Now I'm mixing up some Payne's Grey on a smaller flat brush and I'm going to very loosely darken up the window panes. I'm going to make some slightly darker than others because I think that will look quite effective. In the reference photo there's quite a bit of light reflection which of course if you wanted to you could, you could paint in but I think I'm just going to keep it nice and simple because I want the windows really to be a bit of a you know to draw the eye the viewers eye to the windows and then to look around the painting from that point so I want them to be um, simple but quite effective if you see what I mean. I've drawn this window in, um, this long window, much larger than in the reference photograph and I quite like it because it looks almost like a, almost like a door. So I'm just going to sort of go with that and see how it ends up. Just varying some of the tones um, on the left side and the lower parts of the windows, darkening it up with a stronger mix of Payne's Grey. Just using the Payne's Grey as well to put the shadows underneath the roof of the veranda and underneath the eaves here. So it's just a matter now of balancing up some of the tones um, around the edges and the darker parts of the cottage and along the 
the bottom along the ground and just sort of getting in some rough shadows. Um, going to paint in the side quite dark as well. I think we're nearly ready to go in and paint the trees. I've already penciled in the main trunks of my little trees that I want um, and now I'm using the rigger brush with Payne's Grey and some little bit of burnt sienna and I'm just going to pull up those simple shapes up into the canopies that I've already painted and then once I've got the trunks nicely placed and a few branches then I will come in with a stippling brush and finish off the trees. So I'm trying to keep the shapes um, of the branches simple and keep the trunks and branches fairly thin. I want them sort of leading in again using the branches and the trees to sort of lead across lead the eye to that overgrown cottage to try and create more interest the same on the other side again I'd drawn them in in pencil so I knew where I wanted my marks to be I think again it's acting to sort of already starting to work to bring the background together a little bit more. The paint is like a sort of an ink like consistency at the moment so that it'll flow beautifully from the rigger. I think we're nearly there now. I'm not sure whether I like that little bit of dark at the base of that tree. I think I'll change that in a bit. Just there. I'll cover that with some with some foliage. Now here's the painting so far and the next stage will be to get the stippling brush out and to decide what colours to use. So I've decided to use lemon yellow, cadmium yellow and dark perylene green, a Winsor & Newton colour. And I'm just going to use the stippling brush to go over the areas that I have underpainted already. Um, for the tree canopies. I'm taking care to make sure that I get some of those nice ye bright yellows around the edges of the canopy so it looks like the sun is hitting the leaves and using the perylene green to get in um, some shadows. If you try this then for your own picture um, it's just a matter of trying to get it to balance at this stage. This is the last touch for this painting um, and so I'm just going to keep going varying the different colours on the brush um, until it looks how I want it to look. I think that's just about right. I think it's time to take the tape off now and have a look at it and for quite a quick painting I think it looks rather nice actually I'm, I'm very pleased with the stippling effect I'm not keen on stipple br brushes um, when they are used for the entirety of a painting but because we had a wet in wet underpainting for the foliage here I think the, the stippling effect has worked really nicely well, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, if you did, please um, hit the subscribe button and the like. And um, why not join me on Patreon, where there are, as I said earlier, um, three complete lessons for this. Thanks so much for watching. Take care. Bye.